Hello, everyone, and welcome to a very special episode of Books and Booze, the series where the Lushes invite on indie authors to talk and read a little bit about their books, being an author, the writing process, all that fun stuff. So I'm going to pass it to Don to introduce this week's author. Hi, guys. Today we have the very special, the one that we were excited to have, Stephanie Hurst, who is our VIP Patreon. We are so excited to have you here. Hi, Stephanie. How are you? Hi, I'm very good, very nervous, but yes, I'm here, <laughs> all the way from the UK. <laughs> yes, tell us a little bit about yourself, where you're from, how long you've been writing, do you have any pets, and what are their names? Okay, so I am from the UK, if you can't tell. Um, I've been writing for two years now, only two years. And yes, I've got a pet. pet. I've got a little cat called Millie. Um, she's, we're in a kind of a battle of wills, to be honest. Um, <laughs> like she thinks she owns the house and she's the like alpha female, whereas I very much believe I'm the alpha female. So at the moment, there's kind of that going on. <laughs> she she purposely, if my husband's rubbing my feet, will just come up and be like, no, I'm here. Rub me instead, daddy. And it's like, <laughs> so, yeah. So, like, I love her. I love her, but. Mm. <laughs> oh, yeah. She's a little flirt. We have a thing. We look at each other and it's like, well, it's like, I, I know what you're trying to do and you know what I'm trying to do. And you just, yeah. So it's like a battle of wills between us. So, yeah. <laughs> Do you think she'll um, win? D- 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 <laughs> no, no. <laughs> I hope not. Oh no, I hope not. <laughs> she, she will. She'll break you. <laughs> I know. I know. I'm holding on. I'm clawing. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> she's probably listening now, and she's like, "Yeah, I got you." I'm <laughs> sneaking. I know, I'm like, I'm like, is she listening? <laughs> She'll be on next week's podcast episode to tell her side of the story. And everyone, <laughs> introducing Millie. Yeah, it will be very much so. Oh god, I started a whole saga now. <laughs> so, Stephanie, tell us about the book you're going to be reading for us today. I'm going to be reading from my debut novel, which is uh, Muse of Ruin. Um, it released in January this year. So, yeah, that one. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> John's holding it up for our listeners out there. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to, I thought I'd uh, read from that and give you a taste of uh, what I like to do. <laughs> yeah, no, no, I'm excited. excited. Oh, my goodness. I, yes, so excited. Yeah, I'm so excited. We, like, I usually don't go on to the books and booze like it's not but like for you I'm like yes <laughs> like I I like hurt myself and I'm like no I can't I can't oh. miss today I'm like I have to be on <laughs> well I with with the, I am quite I'm a gamer as well so like a lot of well, all of my stories are very action-packed I like that side of it so as much as it is romance I like a lot of the action yeah scenes in there so the scene I'm doing is is a bit of an action scene as well so I thought just to keep you entertained That's <laughs> That's awesome. yeah. I'm excited to drink <laughs> <laughs> yeah the main point of this <laughs> Sonia what are our drink words for tonight all right we have Tony we have knife and we have the Titans. So Sweet. Yeah. So I'm going to mute myself so you don't have to hear me slurping away. Yeah, golfing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so feel free to start whenever you are ready to go. Thank you. Okay. <clears throat> so this is Calliope. My mind races. The excitement of my kill hangs in the air, back in that fucking alley where I left it. Last night I acted impulsively and I can't shake the dread. I kept the shadows away from the witnesses, our cameras, but the knowledge that I could have missed something taunts me. Only one person takes precedent of my self-preservation and the girl from last night is not her. History repeats itself when I protected her and I fear my future will follow the same path. I'm agitated as I prepare the order for the two strippers who openly discuss the murder behind the Titans Club. Whoever did it is fucking stupid, Candy strolls as she chews on a piece of gum. I bristle as I wrap their orders. My fingers itch to throw a blade between Candice's pretty blue eyes. Yeah, Persis will be pissed this happened in his territory, Shirley says, giggling. 
I'd be more scared of Atlas. He may be hot, but he's terrifying. If the guy who did this has any sense, he'll skip town immediately. Your orders, I snap as I shove their sandwiches towards them. My actions already concern me, and I sure as shit don't need them reminding me just how much I fucked up. Also, their assumption the murderer is male has me biting my tongue with the need to correct them. Thanks, Calla, they both chorus with too much happiness for my darkened soul. I nod and quietly see as they leave. Fuck this. I growl as I flick off the light for the sign outside and lock the door. If I don't close now, I'll add another kill to my list before the lunchtime trade ends. My limbs are tight with tension upon entering the kitchen. I store the bread that will go unused today and curse Candice, Shirley, Pete, the Titans, hell, even Uncle Coas. None of this would have happened if, he, if he'd let me go with him. Blaming Coas is hugely unfair. I wouldn't have this business or my beautiful bike if it weren't for him. The farmer meant I could stand on my own two feet and the latter helped to ease his guilt. He blames himself, himself for my stint in Juve, claiming he should have been there for my mother and me. I don't dwell. Shit happens. I need to forget about last night by keeping busy and I've been dying to try a new brownie recipe. What better time than when I've, I'm on the cusp of spiralling into insanity? The best way to tackle your problems is to ignore them. I'm sure that's how the saying goes. Yep, burying my head initiated. It's late when I drag my tired ass into bed. I plan on falling asleep quickly with how my body aches, but my eyes stay wide open. My cold box is pitch black, perfect for a good night's sleep, but my mind is racing. The nagging voice, which surprisingly resembles Candice's, continues. Her words bat inside my head. Should I leave Tartarus and never return? Have I crossed a line that will ultimately come back to bite me in the ass? After two years of chasing and slaying demons, I fucked up. I thought I was careful, but everything happened too quickly. If I get this wrong, I will be locked up for the rest of my life and I can't go back to that. I would rather die. Pete had been tougher than my ordinary victims. The purple bruise on my left cheek attests to that. Our altercation satisfied my demon more than any other kill ever did. I spend days preparing and planning down to the tiniest detail. I know how to kill them before I attack, but pure adrenaline took over with Pete. Not knowing if I would survive elevated the thrill. It may have been an impulsive choice, but the high was phenomenal. I should be enjoying this euphoria, not worrying about what ifs and maybes, but now I'm dreading suffering the consequences. In frustration, I scream into my pillow as I beg the voices to shut the fuck up. Please, let me sleep. A loud crashing noise has me bolting from my bed. I swipe the hunting knife from the sheath attached to the underside of my bed frame, ready to attack. Shit, shit, shit. I strain to hear other noises while creeping across the room towards my computer. I keep my eyes trained on the door as I tap the keyboard and ring up the security feed. Three cameras are offline and the force stops my heart dead in my chest. I rush to the door and force it open without a second thought. The blood pounds in my ears as I stare in horror at the flames pouring out of my kitchen door. No, I scream and rush forward, ignoring the intensity of the heat. Arms suddenly wrap around my waist and drag me back before I can reach the door. Instinct takes over, my need to save my business being all that matters. I grip the hunting knife tight in my fist and swing my hand behind me. The knife plunges deep into my attacker and I'm dropped from their hold. Landing on the ground, I turn to find a Pete lookalike, tattoo and all, crumpled on the floor with a hunting knife sticking out of his ear. His face is frozen with shock as death quickly lays claim. A shadow moves in the corner of the yard, warning me that I'm not alone. Diving back into my home, I grab the old throwing knives Uncle Coas bought me. I swore they would never taste a person's blood because they were precious, but sentimental promises are irrelevant when it comes to survival. Rushing back outside, I find Tony staring at the dead body. My mouth drops open, my mind clamouring to catch up and connect the dots. Did he and his friends see the flames and come to help? The guy lying lifeless in my yard technically only tried to stop me from running into a burning building. He didn't hurt me. I, I didn't give him chance. Did I overreact? Tony looks up, his face contorted with sorrow and rage. I instinctively step back, but he lunges. He barges into me and my back hits the wall hard, knocking the air from my lungs. Tony's hand instantly snakes around my throat and squeezes. I have to give you credit, Calla. You had me fooled. His grip on my throat tightens, cutting off my oxygen. I stare back at him as I move the blades between my fingers. 
I don't want to kill Tony. I like him. Maybe this is a huge misunderstanding. My boss has sent us here with a message. The Titans are coming for you. I would have left it at burning down your business, but you killed Mike, you little fucking whore. Nope. No confusion. Sorry, Tony. I don't allow him to say anything else. I've heard enough. I bring my hand up fast, dragging the metal lodged between my fingers across his face and slicing his skin like butter. Tony screams, but tightens his grip, causing dark spots to dance over my vision. The warm, tingly feeling of adrenaline rushes through my veins and lights me up. I punch him in the throat, and when he drops his hand, I slice through his carotid artery. Tony releases me and grips his throat, his hands staining red from the river flowing. He opens his mouth to say something, but all that comes out is a gurgle. I step to the side as he collapses to the ground. My stomach twists with unease. This had nothing to do with retribution or feeding my sick needs. This was survival, and killing Tony brings me no pleasure. He's been a loyal customer for two years, and we've had many conversations. He's the closest thing I had to a friend. He wasn't a bad guy. He just worked for terrible people. The Titans. The pop and hiss of glass smashing breaks through my days, and I stare at my pride and joy as her soul burns. Tears spring to my eyes, but I quickly wipe them away, rejecting the sorrow and instead harnessing the anger. Tony came here to destroy my world and send me a message, but he did it at the command of another. The Titans stole from me tonight, and if they think this message will scare me, they are sorely mistaken. Their remaining time on this planet just shortened. Make them pay. Turning from the two dead bodies now littering my yard, I re-enter my home and immediately boot up the programme I created. There's no danger of the fire spreading to my sanctuary while I'm here, and I don't give a shit about the neighbouring properties, but I won't, it won't be long before the emergency services are here to help. My time is limited. A new hunt begins, and the target is the Titans. I know of them, but didn't know their names until the conversation in my shop earlier. I turn from the screen and grab my black hold all as the computer searches for medical documents, financial records, academic information, and images. I can't stay here any longer. The firefighters will already be on their way, and when they see this place, the cops will be called. I drag the steel footlocker out from under my bed and open it. Inside is my treasure trove, a candy store of blades and daggers. I don't have room on my bike for all of them, so I choose a hunting knife that I attach to my lower leg and a set of throwing knives I affix to my left arm. Next, I put a flip knife and claw blade into my leather jacket before adding a few more blades to my bag, along with toiletries and clothes. Dressing in black, I return to the computer and transfer all the information onto my phone. I'm agitated that I don't have more time for a thorough search, but whatever details I've I've gathered will have to do. This will not be a well thought out intricate killing. It will be a massacre. After forcing Stuffy into the bag, I retrieve my lighter from the bedside table. With one last glance around the room, I flip it open, light the flame and toss it on the stack of papers in the corner. This is my fail safe, one I hope never to use, but the evidence here would be my end in the wrong hands. The pain of losing my home is nothing compared to my business. My home held my inner monster, but my business tethered the good Callie, the person I desperately wanted to be. With that gone, only darkness remains, and now she roams free. Heading to my bike as sirens draw close, I swear to my demons that we will get revenge. The Titans believe they own this city, but their reign ends today. I'll send them to the depths of Hades, where they will eternally regret messing with Calliope Jones. That was so good. <laughs> Oh, that was my gosh. You are really good at writing action scenes, so I'm really good that you write action scenes. <laughs> I like that. I'm just going to take a really drink. long drink. I need to take <laughs> yeah. a really long drink. <laughs> I, was I was like, so, oh, like, wait. Yeah. <laughs> in, this, like, in the story that I was like, wait, I'm supposed to be drinking to words. I'm like, oh, no. <laughs> yeah. That's... <sighs> You read that? No, very well. that was really that was amazing. Oh my gosh! <laughs> yeah, I, I just I, I love I love like action. I like the obviously playing computer games and stuff. Like I, I love the action scenes and that feeling. So I I need it in my box. Like I need to feel that tension and that excitement. And so yeah. Um, okay, so what what type? What are your favorite video games? I'm curious. Um, <laughs> I mean, my, my all-time favourite is Dragon Age. I love the Dragon Age franchise, yeah. Um, I'm currently playing Starfield at the moment. Um, Me too! <laughs> yeah. I love Starfield. 
it's so great. I love it. it. Is. Yeah. I've I've done. I mean, there's there's a lot of issues, but you know, but yeah, it's 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 a good game. Um, I love the little bits where like certain like dialogues and stuff are just like oh, I really love the writing behind that. And then but I've I've done the one playthrough, and then I'm doing like a full playthrough now. So yeah, I'm on my enjoy. first my first uh, go. Through. <gasps> so yeah. good. It's so <laughs> yeah. good. It's 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 so big. It's like wow. yeah, there's so <laughs> much to it. I have you played Outer Worlds? I have, yes, I too. Yeah. yeah. So like it kind of like gives me it's that good. vibe, but there's more to it. There's just yes. so much more. And I'm like, okay, I like this a lot more. I do love Outer Worlds, but there it doesn't have too much more. You can beat through, the game in like 45 minutes if you just do like the yeah. main quest. Yeah. Like yeah. It's, like, yeah. it's a little bit, yeah. If you don't just kill everybody, you yeah. can beat it pretty fast. But like, yeah. So I like Starfield. It's like if society wasn't too crappy, it's still crappy, <laughs> but like, it's less crappy than Outer Worlds. So well, saying that, I've not been to our planet yet, so we'll see. I mean, maybe yeah. it gets worse as you go to uh, It probably planet. gets worse. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, my ultimate, like, space one is definitely Mass Effect, though. Oh, that's just, Mass Effect for me is my favorite, like, spacey games. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Mass Effect. It, eh. I like, I like <laughs> it. It's not, like, my like top is like my favorite like alien type game is gears of war oh yes yeah 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 (laughs) (laughs) yeah you'll find i probably yeah i'm a big gamer so it's yeah (laughs) if it's out there i've probably played it (laughs) so is it safe to say that if you're not writing you're playing video game yeah what i normally do is after i've finished like writing and stuff and got a book out i'll collapse into a game like and just because i want to escape like so i just like fall into a game and just like shut myself off for like a week of just playing a game and everybody leave me alone i'm escaping into the, this universe now or whatever so it's, so it's like, like a reward <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, 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 it's like they've got the book let them have the book they can read it while i just i'm gonna just stay over here and escape and, and ignore what everybody's saying about it just in case yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when i come back it'll all be fine <laughs> oh. so <laughs> I'm so I'm so out. And I'm just like, I had question. did she freeze <laughs> That's what I thought at first. I was like, Don's not talking. <laughs> or is so there, starstruck? I know there's no like blinking or anything. It was just, <laughs> she's just girl crushing hard. I think there's our VIP here, okay? I think she glitched. <laughs> yeah. Broken, yeah. Stephanie, you think you're nervous. Oh my god. Why? <laughs> Honestly, I think this is what I said. You know, I said this today. I said, it's, it's, it, I've been listening to these girls for nearly a year now. I said, and I'm going to go on a show with them. I said, I'm so like, oh, I said, it's not just about, I said, because I hate the reading that I hate that, but it's like, it's this, it's this. It's like, I've been listening to these girls and now I'm a part of it. And I'm like, <laughs> well, I'm just over here, like, fangirling, but ignore me. I'm like, oh, gosh. <laughs> it's funny. <laughs> Because for us, we're like, oh, this is our VIP Patreon who we shout out at the end of our episodes and stuff. And we're like, oh, my gosh, she's going to be on our podcast. <laughs> oh, my <laughs> gosh. We're talking about having you on our podcast for, like, ever. We're just oh, like, yeah. we, we need Stephanie. We need Stephanie. And then, like, when you actually said yes, we were like, okay, the countdown is on. <laughs> Stephanie's coming. <laughs> Stephanie's coming. All Everyone's three of us prepared. have to be here. We have to be here. <laughs> Uh, just me no uh, to me it, it, the being a vip the only reason for me i just want to support you if your tears were higher i'd pay that as well because honestly they're just listening to you every week you've brought me so many laughs and joy and, and just i love listening to all like your conversations i'll i'm at, by the way you you didn't know this but for like the last year you have been having a four-way conversation because i've been obviously having my conversation in the car with you while i've been driving so you know, if you want to re- <laughs> you want to respond back to any of that i'd appreciate it like, yeah. you know I've, I've been really invested in this so like oh, no. whatever it's fine like 
know. <laughs> I was ignoring you. <laughs> well, it, I'll be honest, it has felt that for the last year. Like, you've just totally ignored me. But it's okay. Maybe. It's okay. Like. <laughs> okay, now we're going to have to have her on a regular episode where we just randomly <laughs> pick a topic. Number. Yeah. <laughs> you're now officially a lush. Welcome. <laughs> so you're going to have it now where you're just going to be talking and you're going to be like, I wonder if she's actually responded to this now as we're talking. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to have to, like, stop. Listening. Yeah, Stephanie, if you're listening, uh, <laughs> have to do a sides, you know, just because when you've talked about games before, I'm like, I play that, I play that too. <laughs> <laughs> no, they're not listening again. They're not listening again. Okay. So I'm Eminem, I wrote to you, but you ain't calling. Is all I can think about. <laughs> oh dear. So besides gaming and writing, what else do you do on your free time? Uh, I suppose I have to do the whole mother thing, having two kids. Oh, <laughs> yeah. oh, no. oh no. yeah, we all know that. Yeah, that one. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. yeah, I've got a 12-year-old and a 6-year-old, so. Um, oh, yeah, oh, that's, 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 that's I have a 13-year-old and a 5-year-old. Oh, my God. That's so very close. <laughs> I have a 6-year-old and a 16-year-old. <laughs> Well, my 12 year old is called Jessica. So there you go. Oh, <laughs> I know. Everyone's <laughs> called Jessica. Okay? No, honestly. <laughs> and then one of my best friends is called Sonia. And one of my childhood friends was called Don. So, I mean, if this isn't fake. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Like, Jessica, no offense, but like, your name is pretty like normal. But like, a Sonia? I can't believe it that you know I'm... another Sonia. Mm hmm. Like, I, I don't. Honestly, I know I know two. Okay, but like to know a Sonia and a John, it's, it's rare. It's yeah, rare. That's and true. I know. That's and what, Jessica. It was meant to be. It was always it was meant, meant to be, to be that I was to fall on your podcast, and that was it. it was <laughs> the like, stars yeah. aligned. Um, yeah, you know? that's yeah. it. I think my whole future was leading up to this moment. So. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So, oh, I'm that, so sorry. <laughs> so, well, this is, I mean, this is the pinnacle of life, isn't it? This After this pog this ends, it's like, what do I do with my life? Yeah, I mean, that's right. That's like, it. It's like, it's uh, all downhill, isn't it? it that's right. Go. You're going to start having like a crisis. <laughs> yeah. That's it. <laughs> the end, like, there we go. Like, there was one time I was on this podcast and then like, that was it. <laughs> I was riding it high on the podcast and then no, no. Still. The post podcast blues. I understand. Yeah. <laughs> PPB oh, classic. Yeah. So Stephanie, um, Muse of Ruin, which I have my copy here. How long did it take you to write? Uh, it took me nine months in total. Um, but it wasn't like full on writing. I was kind of just because it, it was in my first book. I was kind of very much like needed to I, I was I was panicking about it a lot so I kept stopping starting going back I must have rewrote wrote the start about five times <laughs> till I eventually settled on right this is how it's going to start and so it, it was a long process um but to be honest I'm not I, I don't want to I don't want to kind, kind of rapid release lots of books um I don't want to have them I I'm not one of those writers that can get a good story out within three or four months I know there's there's some amazing authors that can do that and I'm in awe of them but for me I like to kind of just let it savor because I'll, I'll write a whole scene and then I'll go to bed and wake up and go nope that was totally wrong delete the whole thing and write it again so it's kind of like I need the time to let it sit and simmer and think is that right is this is it right and yeah nine months in total um but I'm currently due to release the second book in this series um next month so yeah, I'm excited. yeah it's it's not this it's um this story this uh, muse of room was about calliope and the next book is about her sister so yeah so they're all standalones kind of you can read them on their own without having to read them all but yeah so I'm excited. Like in the same universe, right yeah yeah, like they're, <laughs> yeah they're in the same universe i'll send you the next one as well so you've got it done um <laughs> You don't have to, but like, yeah, no, I'll definitely appreciate send it. it. Yeah, no, definitely. Send it, yeah. <laughs> you don't have to, but you know my address, don't you? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, you no, already yeah. have it, you know. <laughs> you might as well. Um, no, but yeah, I'll send you the next one, like I say, because it's, it's a lot. 
what I've done with the universe, I know I've, I've loved the shared universe concept where you can kind of have characters dipping in and out, but <laughs> I've just released, released the synopsis for Muse of Fear. That's the second book. And uh, it basically, what I'm doing is I'm pitting the characters in the second book against the characters in the first book. <laughs> because, you know, why not? <laughs> yeah, why not? Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. so I've made everybody fall in love with the characters from the first book and then I'm going to send them to war against the characters from the second book and really give them some emotional <laughs> I, feel like I don't want them to go to war because I love them like, why? why do I like these new people why it was just like having your action figures like you love them both but like there has to be a winning side right yeah so. exactly exactly <laughs> and I'm gonna I want people to be at a point where they're halfway through the book just like I don't know who I want to win <laughs> <laughs> I'm so mean <laughs> <laughs> just causing turmoil yeah Emo- emotional turmoil that's all I want that's all I ask for that's <laughs> it that's it that's one it. simple thing yeah <laughs> just just you know just just that and I'm okay <laughs> so can I, so Cal- uh, I can't even talk Calliope Calliope and the Titans that is um Greek mythology correct yeah that is yeah I so is um, that something that you've always been interested in um, to be honest, I love uh, all kinds of like mythology, history, that kind of stuff. I'm not a connoisseur in any way. Like, I'm, I'm not. I don't know everything about everything. But when I write the books, I do a lot of uh, research, spend quite a few hours, days <laughs> researching things. Um, but what I've done with this is I've called it Twisted Mythos. Is the actual name of the series. And what I've done is taken the concept of the Titans, and because it's characters in it that are not well known. I've created my own story because it's like there's no real myth for them. So it's like, well, let's create one. So that's what I like to do. I like to play with, um, you know, the ideas and the myths because they're not set in stone. This is what they believe happened. We don't know. So I like to think my version is what actually happened. (laughs) 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 That's what I believe. But yeah, what I want to do is eventually go on to maybe even doing like King Arthur and the Egyptians and the Romans and just doing lots of different, you know. That's so cool. Yeah, I I just love the idea of having like history within it in some way, shape or form. Make history fun. (laughs) Yeah. Those are my favorite like type of like If there's like a show on TV or a movie or books or something, like something that takes from like mythology, Egyptian or Greek mythology, Roman mythology, and then they kind of like build on the characters. Like, have you heard of Stargate? Yeah. Yeah. So like how they do like the the Egyptian yep. gods, like they do yep. their own kind of like that's I love that. Oh, yeah. Nice. I never yeah. thought about yeah. that actually, but yeah, yeah, no, they do, don't they? I like, yeah, no. I like yeah. that's I, what I mean. I love that aspect, isn't it? Where it's just that little bit of extra. And you don't need yeah, to yeah. know about it, but if you do know about it, it kind of gives you an extra layer. Yeah, just just the base, right? Yeah. And then you can yeah. like <laughs> yeah. Oh, I love it. Yeah. So you did a lot of research then for like the Muse of Mutant, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, just hours of just trawling through all the bits. And, and to be honest, it was good because I'd find little stories about like mythology and I'd think, and then it's inspire a story for me to, to produce. So it was, it was good to go through and, and learn all these different characters because um, the gods that I've got in it, the Titans is actually Atlas, Lelantos and Persis. And there's not very much about, apart from Atlas, there's not very much about the other two. So it was kind of just fun to create this story and, and who they were and create these characters. And yeah, loved it. Absolutely loved it. But yeah, the research goes on for a long time. But I love research. <laughs> but I just, I do worry sometimes because I research the most weirdest of things. It's like I think every author panics about like search history, really, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> incognito mode all oh, the time I, right <laughs> I, pan, I, I panic I panic so much like if anything happened to my husband I am so gonna be like the first person they're gonna look at and it's like my history is gonna say like things like how to kill somebody quickly and stuff like and it's gonna be like no no it wasn't for that I promise it wasn't for that <laughs> <laughs> I'm it's a dark fun. romance author. Okay, listen. Murderers okay, like but now it. that that makes that an excuse for actual murderers, because now they can be like, "Oh no, I'm I'm a dark romance author. It's not me." <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe, maybe I'm actually playing the long game. You never know. Maybe, <laughs> maybe, I'm, exactly. maybe I'm setting up an amazing you like, a book. Yeah, yeah, you're like. 
<laughs> honestly, <laughs> like, I should, have proof. <laughs> honestly, it's part of like the how you get away with murder episode. I think Stephanie should have been on there. <laughs> he beats us off. Just writing a book. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's research. I know. That's what it is. It's, it's uh, completely re it's research, honestly. <laughs> yep. With your uh, researching, have you found anything like down a rabbit hole? You're like, oh, like, yeah. Like the, weird, the weirdest thing you found. <laughs> oh, God. God, I can't think. But no, I do fall down the rabbit hole because I'll, like, I'll be like, busy writing and I'll go oh I'll just research that and then an hour later I'm like I really should stop researching this thing that is nothing to do and do with what I was initially writing <laughs> <laughs> it's like, it's like, where have you gone with this and it's like there's no so yeah it, it's very easy but you know I'm an author we procrastinate we, we like to do those things it's kind of <laughs> comes with a trade <laughs> Well, it sounds like you you have a lot of like world building. Which do you find harder, like cre like character or world building? Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> That's hard because like I really enjoy the world building aspect. I actually do um, creating worlds. Like the the Muse of Rune is set in the city of Tartarus, but it's a contemporary. So it's like it, which reminds me of like the Gotham feel. I wanted it to be that kind of Gotham Dark Knight feel. So I love that world building aspect, and I love to imagine these worlds and then create them. So, but my characters come to me, and they're actually people inside my heads. So like I have actual conversations <laughs> with my characters inside my head. So like. I don't create, I don't feel like I create them, even though I probably do. It doesn't feel like I can. That sounds so, I'm not crazy, I promise. Um, <laughs> you're not crazy because you wrote a book. Now, if you were coming to me without a book and you're like, I got these characters inside my head, you know, that would change the conversation a little. But it, they do become very real and I, I don't know, it, like, so I, I don't know. I, if I had to pick one of I, no, I'm not picking one. I like them both. <laughs> okay, okay. Fair answer. Fair answer. Yeah. <laughs> Who has been your favorite character to write or to come to you? Definitely Calliope. Hang out with you. <laughs> yeah, no, definitely Calliope. She's, I mean, she's a serial killer and she's just like, the, the, some of the stuff she comes out with in that book is just, and I say she, like, it's, because it, it does feel very much like she takes over and writes some of the times and it's just like, because it's funny because I'll be writing and I'll be in character because I do it in first person point of view and I do all the boys as well and my husband will walk in halfway through me right and he'll just say something I'll be like what and he'll know I mean he's the <laughs> character and he's like I'll talk to you later <laughs> it's, it's like, <laughs> because I, I do feel like but yeah no Calliope has been my favorite because she's just I like that she's so tough um she's got the thing is is I, I like the fact she's a serial killer yet she's got these really strong morals like she wants to protect people so she's like she's killing the bad people in the world not the good people um but then on the other side it's like if you took away all the bad people would she still kill people yes she would so it's like <laughs> do you know what I mean it's a need for her so it's kind mm -hmm. of like messing with you where it's like well she's good because she kills bad people but it's like well she's not because she's still killing people and she'd still yeah. do that <laughs> so so but I do I, I loved writing Calliope she's a lot of fun but writing Cleo a sister at the moment is quite fun as well so yeah you're like, I'm worried about the police with my history. And they're like, I love that she's a serial killer. <laughs> so like, they're just like adding on to that. <laughs> this is why I'm worried. Because it's, 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 not, it's not the history that worries me. It's the history drawing them in and then them interviewing me that worries me. <laughs> I love <laughs> dig, it. I dig my own grave. <laughs> Say the wrong thing. Oh, no, that's this. I need to stay off the radar. It would go down like this. And I'm gonna be like, oh, really? Oh, God. <laughs> um, so you talked about like how it, when your husband comes in and you'd like get all frazzled. Is there like a certain um technique? Like, do you have a ritual when you write? Like, do you have to have a certain drink? Do you have to be like a certain time of day? Anything? <laughs> Yeah, um, I do get a lot of my writing done when the kids have gone to school in the morning. So once they're at school, I get uh, about five hours of just peace and quiet. My husband's at work. I'm here because I work for myself um, because I'm not a full time author yet. So I do work for myself, but generally I'm at home. So it's like 
I can I can just write for like five hours straight and that's when I get a chunk of my work done however um I also get like inspiration in the middle of the night and I will wake up <laughs> with something going on and I've just got to come down and write and it's like I've just got to get it out um which yeah I've done a lot of sessions at three and four o'clock in the morning where I'm just writing away (laughs) that's an artist thing I swear my husband does music and he'll he'll be like 3 a.m and he'll get up and I'm like where are you going and he's like I have an idea (laughs) (laughs) and then he like walks out and he's like into his phone and he he sets up record and he's like well it's just like a melody right so he doesn't have words for it yet it's just the tune of something <laughs> just recording it so he doesn't forget and then he'll come back to bed it must be like a creative thing like while you're asleep you just like that's where the ideas like surface uh, yeah, like must be. yeah, your REM sleep kind of like blah blah. <laughs> yeah. that's, that's, it must be because honestly, I've wrote I've wrote some brilliant stuff in the middle of the night, and I'm like, this is amazing. I'm so good. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so amazing. <laughs> I'm like, Look at me go. Like, if you know. I'm doing anything at 3 a.m., I'm gonna think I'm really good at it. Look at me at 3 a.m. doing the thing. Like, yeah, it's when I, it's when I read it about the next day that I'm like. <laughs> I don't know. It's gonna be like my affirmations when I like can't sleep. I'll be like doing some kind of baking and I'll be like, I'm amazing. <laughs> These are called manic episodes, by the way, you guys. <laughs> um, it's funny that you say that because when you sent me your book, you also sent me um a little notebook thing. And I sleep beside this, believe it or not. Oh. Because in the middle of the night, I get ideas to write, and I write in it. Oh, get in. Oh, that's amazing. <laughs> yes. So thank you for that. Um, I, so I, I love that you're doing that. So how is your book coming? Thank you for asking. So I didn't have to ask. <laughs> Normally, I have to ask every episode. Um, okay. So this is not the one book. I'm, I'm doing another one. Like, I have a bunch of notebooks. Um, I'm at 14,000 words started so far. That's fantastic. Yeah, definitely. So, definitely I'm, I'm getting there. I'm slowly getting there. But uh, I mean, I haven't earned a full, full book yet, but I'm going to get there eventually. Well, it's, it's not a race. So no, like, I, know, I, mean, I know. You've got to take 14,000 words. It's absolutely amazing. For somebody who's I'll have never to, written like, before. send you like, the, like a little bit of it so you can like critique it and be like, you know, I liked what you did here, but uh, you might want to do something with this. And I'll be like, <laughs> I absolutely love doing that. I love doing it for, I've, I've had a few authors that do that where I'll just, they'll send me the work and then I'll read it. And when I, sometimes it's just more, if they're stuck on how to like link an idea, like we'll have a little chat and then they get inspiration and then they'll go off and write. And it, sometimes it's just nice to have somebody read it and kind of go, yeah, I'm loving this because it puts <laughs> that fire under you. Do you know what I mean? So yeah, yeah send it to me. <laughs> <laughs> I love dark romance. <laughs> Okay. I'm going to definitely need some critiquing. <laughs> Speaking of writing, I asked this question to all the authors. Uh, I kind of have a guess based on uh, what you've said thus far, but are you a plotter or a pantser? A pantser all the way. Yeah. <laughs> I assume. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I get, I get strips, like I get the story and it comes to me and then it's just like, just go for it, you know? And like I say, just, I, I have tried to plot in the past and then, I mean, at the moment I've got these things on the wall where I've just like written notes and put them all on the wall and I should have taken them down about two weeks ago because they're useless but they're still up there <laughs> <laughs> they make no sense now because they're not really part of the story exactly it's like they're <laughs> absolutely pointless and I'll, I'll give my husband his due he's tolerated the fact they're still in the bedroom and he's not even said a word and I'm like I really should take them down at this point but <laughs> He probably he thinks they're important. You know? <laughs> <No>. <laughs> he doesn't want to do it. Yeah, I, I, I think I'm at that point now. I'm like, how long can I leave it until he actually asks me? I mean, can we get into two years? And he's like, like well, that you was know? <laughs> that was the game. Oh my god! In like ten years, celebrate like the anniversary <laughs> of the notes <laughs> being up. You're like, well, done and they're still there. And he won't ask. I'm not, I'm not asking. I'm not. No, I'm not doing it. <laughs> I'm like, how hey, long? Like, and then when he eventually asked, I'd be like, oh yeah, that book came out like 17 years ago. What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I've just got this image now. So I think it's it's like a battle of wills within myself of not taking it down just because I want to see how long he'll go before because he's a, he's got OCD as well. So. <laughs> 
wisdom <laughs> challenge. <laughs> That's fear torture. Oh, I love it. I know. And he's I being know. such I a good spouse. Like, like, like <laughs> such a good partner for just like being like, okay. Yeah. I mean, for, it's like, like, you can probably see him like staring at it and his eye twitching and be like, <laughs> no, I can't ask her. I can't yet. I know. I know. <laughs> I know. I'm gonna. I, I can't. I can't. Wait. I think he'll so clock great. on when Muse of Fear comes out. I think he'll be like, so I can take these down now. I, I've got a feeling he's just waiting for that. <laughs> but, okay, but like just like with OCD, after like a certain amount of time of it being there, he might eventually not be able to take them down <laughs> because they're a yeah, he's so used to it and they'll bother him. Yeah, and they'll bother him gone. if they get taken down. Like he'll switch. <laughs> <laughs> so and he's like where are they gone I need them back <laughs> we need to put notes I need them <laughs> the wall's not complete we need the notes oh my god I love this <laughs> yeah no I mean after 13 years together you have come up with new ways to torture them don't you <laughs> yes I, I do that so much not to your husband but to my own husband I, the I babies had, like, the babies i have these little babies i don't know if they're here so i can show you i do so there's so many i bought way too many um i have, still have a baggie full of babies um i just hide them around my house and then he finds them <laughs> that sounds like fun i might do that <laughs> yeah. best I was of all I ever randomly seen. like you know the the little sticky ones like the ones you tap and i was gonna put little notes around the house I was gonna yeah. do that, like on and on my car and stuff, just to like really piss off my husband. I was thinking of doing that. Just thinking. I don't want to execute nuts though. as is. Okay, like I tried. I convinced him that I wanted a dog from Sonia, and I really didn't. <laughs> But I tried to convince him that we were going to get this dog. And then he got stubborn and was like, okay, fine. Yeah, we're going to get this dog. <laughs> so it was like another battle of wills. Who was going to break? And then it was a game of chicken. Like they yeah, almost ended he's, up with a puppy. Neither of them wanted. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, he did. He sent Sonya money for the dog. Oh, like, my God. <laughs> <laughs> I just had to send it back to me. <laughs> Without him knowing. And like Sonia was coming down, and then she was about to leave, and Dave's like, "Hey, when are we getting this dog?" And I was like, "By the way, money <laughs> <laughs> exactly. back." And he's like, "Are you kidding me?" I'm like, yeah, "I'm getting the dog." He's like, "I was actually, you know, kind of excited for it." I was like, "Too bad, I don't want it." <laughs> oh, Jesus. The uh, husbands. <laughs> husbands. Yeah. I mean, I mean, personally, I think it shows that we care. You know, exactly. We're, we're thinking about them. About yeah, yeah. Them. that's exactly Still. it. The moment we stop pranking you and annoying you, it means we're not thinking about you anymore. Exactly. So, it's our it it relationship's language. dead. Like yeah. I'm still keeping it alive. Yep. Exactly. Right. exactly. If you're not having fun together, what's the point, right? Yeah. Like that, yeah. yeah. Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna like say that to him too when I'm pulling his leg hair when he pisses me off, and I'll just like I'm doing it because I love you. Like I'm hurting you because I love you. <laughs> He's gonna gaslight him a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> you, should, you should definitely do that look as well when you do it. You know that. I'm doing it because I, I love you. you. <laughs> I love you. You gotta smile, big smiles at the same time. There we go. Yeah, there we... My dog Perfect. does that face. Like she'll like. <laughs> I'm like, okay, you need to give me space. And she's like, but I love you. <laughs> like, I can't. Like, it's just crazy. I'm worried she'll like eat me, but she won't because she loves me. But at the same time, <laughs> I'm a little worried. <laughs> you have such big dogs and you're not a very big person. So it's like really funny. Their faces are bigger than mine. <laughs> like, yeah. <'cause> yeah. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> I think you in your sleep it's cool whatever the door's closed they can't get me <laughs> I don't know I don't know your dogs are pretty smart like you didn't even think Neptune was smart and what she do she like held on to that doorknob she oh yeah okay if she, it was a push open she would have been able to open it so I have a little she dog only dog and she's crazy like she's like crazy um she bit into the door handle and turned it the way it can churn like there's like scrapes and stuff like a teeth puncture mark and a churning and if the door if the other dogs pushed on it or anything like 
I don't know, she would have gotten a bad fight. Like she has to be separated from the other dogs because she's crazy. So like <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh man, we could would have been bad, but she's okay. <laughs> right, <Yeah. honey? laughs> So Stephanie, do do you have any arc teams for your uh, books? Uh yeah, I've I it's kind of just again, I just kind of like I've got I've got a reading group at the moment, so um people are like join my reading group and then I'll just kind of say who wants to who wants an arc I just <laughs> whoever wants one can have one of them <laughs> if you want one just like email yeah. me got you like I'll send that's it. it that's it it's like I'm not yeah if you, if you if somebody wants to read my book I'll happily let them read my book I'm not gonna you know I don't do I do, I do sometimes do the whole apply and stuff but I think at the moment I've because I've built like when I first started Muse of Ruin back when it released in January I didn't have any kind of nobody knew me and I, I was nobody I'm, I'm still nobody but you know I've, I've got a I've got a boot now so <laughs> but um no but like I, I didn't have any there was no fans nobody knew my writing so from that I've gathered quite a nice little group of people that are oh, they're, they're amazing um to be honest every, every reader I've spoken to I just love the reading community it's 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 so support especially the dark romance as well it's so supportive it is. like I think a lot of the dark romance community, we've all got trauma in our lives. <laughs> yeah, it's true. yeah, it's like we've we've got all this trauma. So because of that, though, I think it makes us a nicer person because we're kind of like, I don't know, we've been through the harsh and the horrible. So we're kind of the community itself just feels like it's just everybody supporting each other. And I love that. I absolutely love it. Like I always see people building each other up and that I, I love it. So, yeah, when it comes to my readers, I'm just kind of like, if you want a copy, by all means, and I, I, there's nothing. My, my family and my readers are like the two biggest important thing, things for me. So, like, I'm constantly just being like, "Here, have a book. Here, have a book." <laughs> <laughs> you want a book? You get a book. Like, yeah. It's like, just, oh, yeah, I just, yeah, I'm, I'll never be rich. I'll never be rich. <laughs> <laughs> well, we, don't do it. we don't write because we want to be rich. We write yeah. because we want to get these stories out, right? Yeah, that's uh, it. That's why we'll never be rich. <laughs> <laughs> it's never going to happen for me. But it's, I'm good with that because, like I say, I just love seeing people smile and enjoy something and reading. And I mean, I gave one out to one of the mums at school the other day. <laughs> yeah, why? I, I do this to myself. I don't know why. Yeah, I, get, I gave a music for the other day, and uh, she said she was reading it, which I was really happy with because she said she doesn't read that often. So it was nice to know that. <laughs> I'm encouraging someone to read my you're, Yeah, path. you're creating readers. That's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> that is. That's phenomenal. Literacy is so important. <laughs> it is. Yeah, like my mom never saw her read a book until Fifty Shades of Grey. So sometimes it just happens where yeah. books create, you know, people that aren't readers make some readers. So. Mm -hmm. I, I think it's true. I think because sometimes you kind of like growing up, you told what to read by school or whatever and unless you go out there and see all the different try different books and, and realize what your tastes are you can kind of go well I don't read but is it you don't read because you don't like to read or is it you don't read because you haven't found the book for you yet or the genre for you yet because there's so many different ones out there so yeah so I'm, I'm corrupting the mums of my school one person at a time <laughs> that's, that's the way to go i'm on you three know, now three I'm gonna, I'm gonna bring your book next time i'm taking my kid to school and i'll read it right in front of people i'll be like look look you need to get this okay like gorilla marketing yeah. <laughs> speaking yeah. of marketing um which is the easiest platform you find for marketing is Ooh. it facebook tiktok instagram TikTok is definitely the more popular. If you if you can get a video to do well on the, it does. You know, you do see an increase in sales. There's no question about that. Like I've had a couple of videos that have done wellish, and I've seen the increase on my videos. Um, but I also, as to be honest, I spend a lot of my time on Facebook in the reader groups, um, and people ask for recommendations for books. So that's where I might. I would recommend my own or recommend other authors that I've read. So I'd say I spend most of my time on Facebook, but TikTok is probably the better platform to, to especially for dark romance. It's it's really good for promoting. Um, I just need to kind of 
get into a rhythm with it. <laughs> it yeah, <laughs> it's, it's hard. hard to hit that, like, that for you page. You need to, like, be consistent. Mm -hmm. It's like having a job. I'm like, yeah. damn, like, I have to post, like, every three hours. And I'm like, oh, did I post yet? Like, crap. Let me just go post real quick. <laughs> That's it. And I don't like being told what to do. So, like, knowing that, <laughs> like, TikTok is telling me I have to do this, I'm kind of like, no, I don't want to. Yeah, you can't make me. I'll post when I want to post, yeah. mom. <laughs> exactly. So, yeah, I don't, I don't know. It's, it's, it is a really good platform. It's just like, it's, I just want to write sometimes. And it's like, I just want, I don't want to do all the other bits. I just want to yeah. write and talk to people. <laughs> and I'm good with that. <laughs> but no, yeah, I'm getting, I'm getting the, I'm just. <laughs> You're mad. <laughs> yeah. At at what point, like you said, started like a couple of years ago, correct? For your yeah, I, yeah, yeah, I only started a couple of years ago. Yeah. yeah. So what like clicked? You're like, and then like, what was your process to? I've I've always had stories in my head um, from being really young. Like I've always had these stories pop into my head, and like you know, like I, I'm. Have you ever had like a full blown conversation that you know you'll you'll know something you're gonna ha you have the full blown all conversation. the time right? So that <laughs> that's that's a creative brain. They say that that's so you can you can that can be morphed into writing and stuff. And and I've always had these fictional conversations and fictional stories going on in my head. But and I always loved creative writing in school. However, I have got dyslexia, so I did not want to I did not want to write like I thought there's not that I didn't want to is more I, I, there's no way I can be a writer do you know what I mean I, I've got dyslexia not a chance so I went and became um, a bookkeeper and an accountant and I've done all that because I love my numbers and carried on and then while Covid was kind of going on um, this story kept coming to me and I was like oh whatever so I picked up my word document on my uh, laptop and started writing and it was like an explosion in my brain where it was just like now that you've started writing it here's the whole story <laughs> and it was like oh okay so I carried on writing and then I learned that you could get all these different programs that can you know like Grammarly that can check your grammar and spelling and that gave me the confidence then to go okay I can do something with this because that's telling you know it's telling me where I need to put my punctuations and, and all that kind of stuff so and this it's because mainly it's the spelling for me I, I will mix up words and get the spellings all wrong so so having the new systems that are out there that has given me that confidence to go actually I can write too so and then obviously it goes through an editor before going to publishing but mm -hmm. I wouldn't even send it to an editor before it's gone through Grammarly and stuff like so it's given me the confidence to be able to send it to an editor to then edit it to then publish it <laughs> I I love Grammarly like I use it for like emails too like yeah even if it's to, I only use like six words in that email I have to make sure it goes yeah. through Grammarly first like That's it, it. Yeah, that that and all, I use Autocrit as well, which well I, I not used it as much, but yeah, Autocrit's really good for telling you if you've got like strong writing and where to improve and stuff like that. So I love that. Yeah, my autocorrect sometimes is like I have no idea what you're trying to say. I'm like I'm sounding it out. How can you not guess? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm writing it phonetically. Yeah, you should I'm, know. I'm doing, I'm doing Sound my best. It out. <laughs> but then it's that, like when you're somebody who learns vo your vocabulary from reading and no one has teach you uh the sound is not what you think it is no. <laughs> like, no. oh that's the wrong word completely so like you're like the meaning of the word and then <laughs> it pops no. up. eventually you find it it just yeah like, well. it's, it's a dance you know <laughs> <laughs> it's fine but i can see how that could discourage someone from writing for having mm -hmm. like to do that but that's great that there's programs out there to make writing accessible especially because like writing is i feel like not the main part of it right it's the story mm, writing's exactly. just yeah. the medium yeah I that's guess. it uh, for me i mean i know like i can go through muse of ruin now and i already know my writing is improved from that book do you know what i mean because i've write my next book and i know by the time I release two or three more books, I'll be looking back at these books and going, oh, my God, what was that? How did I ever write like that? <laughs> and that, cause that's the, what they say, isn't it? The more you read, the more you write, the better you become. And that's what will happen. Um, but I would have never had the confidence to even take that first step without those programs. And because, like I say, it was never for me. It was like I, I would never have been a writer because I've got dyslexia. Well, I'm glad now we're getting to that point now where 
I can say that now and I can, you know the fact that I can even say that without feeling embarrassed because I used to I used to hate the fact that I had that and stuff so now but I feel like the world's switching changing and yes, uh, you know, yeah we can, yeah we can be open about I've got this issue I've got that issue and not feel like we're going to get judged anymore and yes. if they do want to judge me who cares I think it's <laughs> important to like vocalize these things because like I have a like a learning disability where like dyslexia and like that were patterns but and yeah. my daughter does too but hers is like a lot worse like she can't her patterns are daily life too she can't remember yeah. so like it's important so people feel less alone I'm like mental health I'm very vocal about that too yeah. because I feel it'll help it just makes yeah. people realize they're not weird or freaks or anything we're all different we're i was all about different. to say that we all have issues so <laughs> yeah. like, like no we one... talk about it a lot <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like the autism yeah i think that you would be weird if you have everything perfect in your life like if there's not a single flaw going on like there's something odd about you then like, yeah, <laughs> yeah I, like you're weird that's the not normal, isn't it? Being normal yeah, would be not normal. Rich. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's rich. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's right. You could buy normal. <laughs> yeah, you could buy normal. You just, uh, yeah. I'm sure someone's selling, you know, yeah. you have enough money. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, you're not ugly. You're just poor. Yeah. yeah. Like that. <laughs> yeah. It's exactly that. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think it makes it a less taboo subject. I think that's the thing is it was I always felt like it was taboo. We couldn't talk about these things. And I like now that it's we're kind of getting rid of that. We've still got ways to yeah. go. But oh, I yeah. want it, you know, I talk to my daughter all the time and it's like sometimes I think she looks at me like, Why are you talking about this mom? And it's like, just want to make you aware, you know, you can talk about this with me anytime. And she's just like, <laughs> My okay. son does the same thing. He's like, You already mentioned women's rights. <laughs> I'm like, you don't understand. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Oh, I, I think I was showing a 90s video the other day and I was like look at what we were putting up with we were sexualized on everything and she was like okay mom <laughs> like, showing a Britney Spears toxic and like look at her look at her she had to dress like this to be noticed and she was like Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm pointing out why I have parental issues I'm showing my son the old uh so here we used to have like where do you know where your kids are commercials the boomer parents yeah. in the 80s yeah <laughs> that's not that. even a joke it's like do you know where your kids no are? no no that's not how it went it was like it's 10 p.m do you know <laughs> do where you your know children where are <laughs> that's yeah. the commercial before the news at 10 p.m oh uh, in the, eight, the 70s and 80s right so and like 90s. our parents yeah and 90s so our parents grew up with these commercials because they didn't know, know where their existed. kids were at 10 <laughs> And so I'm showing my son this, and he's like, okay, mom, like, I'm sure, yeah. And I'm like, no, this is real. Oh, yeah, we we used to go out in the morning and didn't come back until the light, street lights came on. That's when we right? come on. <laughs> we didn't have watches. We didn't know what time it was, but when the street lights come on, we had to come in. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. It was. A uh, so you write dark romance. I'm just yeah. curious if you'd ever explore any other genres of writing. Yeah, I really want to. I eventually want to go into paranormal. Um, I, I love. I, I like. Ultimately, I'd love to write like an epic fantasy. I'd love to write something. I don't know. The idea will come and it'll just go. So yeah, and I also horror and I don't know. I'm kind oh. of into writing just anything, really. Yeah, at the moment. I will do everything. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I, 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 sci fi, yeah. horror, it doesn't matter. I'll, I'll mash them all together. I'm the horror yeah. reader here. So, yeah, if you do horror, that's right up my alley. So. <laughs> I, I just feel like I want to try everything at least once. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Why not? I mean, why not? You know, yeah, I, I, I think. For me, I mean, I'm, I'm loving doing what I'm doing. I've got like books arranged for next year of what I'm going to write and everything. So that's kind of, I know what I'm going to do, but I definitely, as time goes on, I'd love to try all different genres and see. And if I fail at it, I fail at it, but at least I did it. <laughs> that's right. Trying, right? Like, yeah, that, that's what I mean. You never it's know. Like you popped your book cherry and now you're just gonna keep going with it, yeah you know oh yeah it's like yeah i just gotta keep writing that's awesome there's so many ideas i mean it's we were, we were talking before about waking up in the middle of the night i used to wake up and just try and like write my idea down um, or I'd, I'd quickly open my laptop at the side of the bed and just type it in and then close the document um but i woke up once with just the title shop 
And I was like, <laughs> <laughs> what do I do with that? So, yeah, oh, that's, that's, that's actually hilarious because I'm actually reading a book called The Store. <laughs> um, so that's really close. It's Maybe a this was novel. meant to be. <gasps> Maybe yeah, this is like... <laughs> this, The Store by Bentley Little. Um, yeah, so uh, you were on the right idea. So <laughs> there you go. Yeah, I mean, I can do a lot with shop. <laughs> yeah, you can. <laughs> You can make it any kind of shop too. Oh, <laughs> an organ shop, you know, like where people are like black market organ. Yeah. See, oh my there's the horror. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. See, people there we go. People think it's a regular <laughs> shop. It's not. <laughs> they think they're, yeah. beef. they're not. <laughs> that, that's cannibalism. <laughs> that's cannibalism. You can put that. <laughs> it's just light cannibalism on a Sunday just night. Just light, <laughs> light cannibalism. Just light. <laughs> just, just a little bit. Oh, no. Yeah. Uh, like, do we have any more questions? I mm. asked. I... Yeah, I asked, I, I asked mine. That's yeah, awesome. Just... <laughs> We're like, do, does anyone have anything else to ask? No. Can I ask a question? Can I ask? Yeah, yeah, of course. What do you love most about doing this podcast? Hanging out with my friends. That's exactly <laughs> it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, this is like the only really socializing I do. Um, and I love it because I don't have to go outside and see other people. So usually when I socialize with others, I get super drained. Yeah. Um, just like just leaving the house, like my battery ends up being half. Um, but like this way, like I get to hang out with my friends and there's very little battery depletion. So like I love I love this. You it's don't fantastic. even have to wear pants. No one's going to yeah. know. No, it's good unless I right? stand up. <laughs> well, just don't do that. Don't just do don't that. Do it. Yeah. <laughs> or do like I, I just find I, I find like because like doing the podcast, we have to schedule it. And it's like it's scheduled hangout times. It's really yeah. hard to do that in general. Like most people are like, You want to go for a cup of coffee? And I'm like, like right now? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like can like, we just like, like until after week, tomorrow like, at least? Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's like I need time to process when I'm good. And now it's like, oh no, this is just part of my routine. Yeah. Yeah. So what about you, Dawn? I just said it's because I get drunk. Like, geez. <laughs> and why do you show up on the days you don't drink? <laughs> That's because I'm sick. If, if I'm not drunk, it's because I'm sick. Or you're just actually recently, I'm not sick and I'm not drinking. Um, I ran out of liquor and I just haven't <laughs> repurchased it. So, Rich, I'll just text it. me. I'll Uber Eats it to you. Okay. <laughs> I didn't even if think of that. I could have. I can be like, Jessica, hook me up for a minute. <laughs> Jessica <laughs> knows. <laughs> she does. She's hooked me up with Starbucks before. So yeah, maybe no. that's where the shop came from. Maybe I was thinking Dawn needs to go to the shop and I just yeah. write it all. Obviously, I just missed the other words off. That was Oh, that'd be such a great novella. The <laughs> quick story of Don going to the liquor shop. <laughs> Who knows? Maybe, maybe it's there's like a robbery going on when she shows up, and she's like, See? "No, I just need my drink," you know. <laughs> but now she's hide and fight the robbery. And she's it's a lot, right? So she's like a super alcoholic. So she's trying to like negotiate. To oh, get you this chug half to a bottle. bottle before you confront the robber. You know, yeah. you have to be in lush mentality. Look yeah. at us. We're writing a book. Like, and you John could, McClane could, it. Could, like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, she could end the book where she like flies, you know, runs back home and just like, lands back in time to, to get ready for the podcast. Exactly. <laughs> She's like, guys, <laughs> you won't believe what happened you today. Believe what happened today? And then they like, no, because she's drunk. So we don't believe you. <laughs> but yeah, she's coming in. She's like, oh my God, guys. So I went to the liquor store. <laughs> Like, okay, no. <laughs> see, I can see it. You know, explosions going off in the background as you're running with your bottles of liquor. Oh, I got my vodka, my rum, and I'm just going. And like, you didn't put a bra on, so like, your titties are like, bum, bum. <laughs> everything's just going. Yeah, it's perfect. Oh, it's beautiful. Oh. Dawn goes to the liquor store. Uh, <laughs> it's it's a twisted a tea. Don't forget my twisted tea. 
That's right. Don't yeah. forget it. She just, that's, that's all she's carrying. She's just carrying like a case. 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 <laughs> case is twisted. Yeah. And that's the like robber. <laughs> I'm a waste it. Come back. At one point, you know, one of the cases opens. She's like, no. <laughs> slow motion. Slow motion. Yeah. I know you write slow motion, but in my head, I think in movies. So I, I think I think we should go on further and just make this into a mini film. Let's just do it. There we go. <laughs> we can enter it into like short film festivals. Yeah. Can, can, can can film liquor. festival. Here we come. There we there go. We go. <laughs> you can be the screenwriter. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you wanted to try every genre. We're gonna do a genre. Don going up for an Oscar, like um, I, I want to thank. <laughs> no, no, Don will be drunk, so she'll Don go be drunk. I <laughs> want to thank <laughs> all my friends. All my friends, <laughs> oh, Stephanie. Stephanie. <laughs> Your name's Stephanie. Put your hand up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, thank you, not, Stephanie. It'll be, it'll be me in my car just going. <laughs> yeah, you're just there. Yeah. Like, They're still ignoring me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my cheeks hurt. <laughs> I know. Um, uh, well, thank you so much to our honorary lush Stephanie <laughs> Hurst, <laughs> our VIP number one fan. Uh, yes. And yeah, thank you so much for coming on. I'm glad we finally got you on. Thank you so much for having me. I've had an absolutely amazing time. It's yeah, it's Same. been fantastic. Thank you. Well, we're gonna have you on again. So. Yeah, we have to have her on a regular episode. Once a month now. Like that's it. <laughs> we'll add it to the VIP Patreon here, see if anyone else bites, you know? Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna get them all on. I'm telling you. I'm gonna I'm gonna like hook them all in now and say, come on, get on this Patreon. <laughs> Oh, oh, maybe gosh. I could give it away with arcs. If you're a Patreon, you get an arc. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. There we go. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> I love how Stephanie's helping market us. <laughs> oh, yeah. so I'm going to go to school and like I'm going to help market her. We're we're going to do it together. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, Steph, if you want to plug any of your like socials or anything right now, you can. Mm -hmm. We will have all your links in the description as well. So. Uh, I've got my website, which is authorstephaniehurst.com, and then social media. I'm just at Arthur Steph Hurst. Every everywhere at Arthur Steph Hurst. With an Perfect. S. Just to confuse people. <laughs> easy, easy. You know. <laughs> yeah, just to confuse people. You know, why not? <laughs> well, all the links are going to be in the description below, so it'll be easy peasy to like just click, just click. Remember, we want to make it easy to find. Yeah. No. So if you're yeah. drunk, you you just have to click, guys. You don't yeah, have just to click. Anybody. Just <laughs> click buy now or whatever it says on the yeah. Apple Add book, to cart. You know? just, just, just Add to cart. cart. Yeah, just go for it. Yeah. Go for it. <laughs> after after you've become a VIP Patreon member. Yeah, after. obviously. Obviously. Yeah. That goes without saying. <laughs> Well, thank you so much, everyone, for listening to another episode of Books and Booze. We will see you all next Thursday uh, with another VIP author. And if we're not that Thursday, then the following Thursday. You know, I don't, I don't know. A Thursday, we release these episodes. So keep an eye out and make sure to check out Fridays for the YouTube video. Uh, so, yeah. Other than that, thank you so much, Stephanie, for coming on. And uh, everyone have a good night. Good night. Bye. Bye.